Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. I'm quite excited today because in today's video I'm going to be trying out a completely new substrate for my artwork and I think you're going to be excited about it too. It's a real game changer. So in the past you'll have seen me use canvases, paper, wood, ceramic, all kinds of different things for my artwork. But today it's going to be completely different because Arteza have sent me some dry wipe board. You know the white boards that you write on and you wipe it off? That's what these are, lap boards. And they are so good for your resin art, your alcohol ink art especially. I'm going to be using some um, Arteza acrylic paints and my Arteza pigments as well in this video. So there's going to be all kinds of things going on, so stay tuned because these are quite exciting. Today's video is a bit different to my usual videos. Normally you see a tutorial and today it's not a tutorial. It's because I've made so many different things and I've filmed them all for, to show you. It would have taken too long to show you all the um, instructions to tell you everything for each one like I would normally do. There's just too much and it would have taken way too long. So I'm going to take you on a fly through of each thing and do a little bit of talking about each one so you get an idea of what I did. Because the main thing I wanted to share with you was just how much you can do with these amazing whiteboards. I'm so pleased with discovering these. So let's get on with it and I'll tell you what my first idea was. Now, when I first saw these and I saw how shiny they were, I immediately thought of the fractal patterns that I did in a different video. You might have seen the other video where I used two resin coasters and made fractal patterns on them uh, by creating a texture with the two shiny surfaces and sandwiching them together, taking them apart and getting an amazing fractal pattern. And I saw this shiny surface and I thought, I've got to do fractal patterns on this. But I also saw the shape of it and I think you will agree, the first thing you think of when you see this is placemat. So I thought I'll make some placemats for my table. And so that was my first project and that's what I'm going to show you now. This method really couldn't be any easier and it's so much fun. All you need to do is completely cover one of your dry wipe boards with um, craft paint. This is acrylic craft paint in a bottle and it's quite thin. It, well, it's thinner than acrylic paint from a tube. Um, it's kind of a creamy consistency and it goes on beautifully and I'm putting it on really really thick I'm using sky blue in the middle and fairy tale blue around the outside the fairy tale blue is an iridescent paint and they're both from Arteza and they seem to just work great for this once you've got your first board completely covered with paint, all you need to do is take your second board and you're making a sandwich with it really and you press it down and give it a really good press. You want to kind of create that vacuum so you don't want any air bubbles in there. Press it right down firmly and give it a little wiggle around and then once you feel like you've probably got good coverage on both pieces, you're going to be taking them apart. And because you kind of get that vacuum effect, it can be quite hard to start it off. Sometimes it helps if you just wedge something in there just to start it off, but then they come apart really easily. And there we have it. One of them didn't cover brilliantly, but you can touch it up with a paintbrush. 
Now look at the pattern that it, that achieves so easily. Isn't that great? And there's more to come with this because what you can do is colour that raised pattern af after it's dried and that's what's coming next. My plan for this was to have it looking like you were looking up through the trees in the forest and to see the sky in the middle. So I'm just smoothing down the paint with a paintbrush in the middle so that I can paint my um, clouds and the sun on afterwards once it's dried. Right, I'm using black ink to go over the raised pattern and for that I'm using a hard roller and I'm not even sure what those rollers are called. I've had it in my bits and bobs box for so long. I don't know where it came from or what it's called, but it's really hard. And the reason for that is because you don't want any softness because it will go down to your um, base if that makes sense. You know what I mean, don't you? You need it to be hard so that it doesn't alter the paint on the very surface of the board. You just want to get that top texture. And if you don't have one of these rollers, you could maybe use one of those plasticky rolling pins or something. I did try just rubbing the ink pad on the surface, but it was just too soft and it really didn't do a great job. It just got too much ink on the bottom surface. So as you can see it's covering really well and I'm going to go all around with that and then it will look more like trees because you can really see that texture a lot better. Winter tree branches and soon I'm going to be painting on the sun. I'm calling it the sun and do you know I'm not even decided if it's the sun or the moon <laughs> but it's going to be white so it could be either. Right, now I'm using a small natural sponge with some white acrylic paint and I'm just really gently um, sponging it on to make those clouds. Actually, it's not just white, I mixed it with some of the blue so it wasn't. I didn't want it to be too much of a white, I wanted it to be more delicate like a proper winter sky with those soft clouds. So a little bit of the white mixed with the blue and just sponging it on and then I can put my sun or moon on the top once it's dry. I decided that rather than painting on the moon, I, I was going to rub it off. So I'm just using a stencil and a cotton bud with some water on it. And I'm just rubbing around inside the circle of the circular stencil and rubbing off the paint because it comes off nice and easily. And that's basically what I'm doing. And that way I'm getting a lovely bright white um, circle. I just wanted to tone it down a bit so I've just got a little bit more of the paint on the sponge and I'm just delicately going over it to blend it all together a little, little bit more and then it's ready for the resin. Well, it will be ready for the resin <laughs> once it's completely dry. You do need to make sure that your acrylic paint is completely dry, especially that first layer that you did because it's so thick it can look like it's dry but when acrylic paint dries, it kind of forms a skin and that skin dries first and so it looks really dry, but underneath it can be wet. So before you add any resin, I would leave it as long as you possibly can before you do that. And here I'm just cleaning up the back of the board. I got it really messy and I should have cleaned it straight away. It would have been much easier. It's really easy to clean just with a damp cloth on the back and it comes up like new, but because I'd left it for so long, it dried a bit too much. And I'm just using a tissue blade just to scrape it off and it comes off really easy. And then I just gave it a wipe. Now 
Now that it's clean and dry, I'm just adding some petroleum jelly, which is just Vaseline really, um, all around the edges so that if any of the resin drips down the sides and under onto the bottom, it just pops off really easy afterwards. You just need to be careful if you're using this method not to get any of your petroleum jelly on the edges or especially on the front because the resin won't stick to it. You'll just get um, bald patches. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just be careful of that. If you don't want to use pet petroleum jelly, just use um, masking tape and trim around the edges. That's fine as well. I just find it quicker and easier to use the petroleum jelly. And now I've mixed my resin and I'm using the heat resistant resin from Resin Pro and it's really good. It's got a really high heat tolerance, which I can't remember at the moment, but I'll put it up on the screen. And obviously it's going to be a placemat. It's going to have hot plates on it. So it needed that resin with the high heat tolerance. And I'm just smoothing it on, making, taking extra care around the edges because if you're going to get any bits missing, it's going to be on the edges. So that's all I'm doing. And then I'm just going to leave it secure. So after the resin was cured, here is the finished result. Well, it's one of them. It's actually not the one you saw me putting the resin on, but this is how they look when they're finished. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but the paint which I used had like a purpley effect. When you move the light, you get all the different colors and you might not be able to quite see it. I'm not sure. If not, I'll try and get some photographs, but it's really turned out really pretty. And so, this is my nice new placemat with that um, heat resistant um, resin from Resin Pro. I can't think what it's called, but it's the heat resistant one. And it's really, really good because if you see, there's no of the none of the Armin blush, which you often do get with heat resistant resins. But I did heat the resin up first, so that's why. So yeah, we've got a nice finish on that. And that's that one finished. So the next idea I had was to try out these boards with alcohol ink and I had so much fun. I'm no expert with alcohol ink, I'll tell you now. Um, there's lots of other videos you can watch for alcohol ink that, where they do it much better than me. But still, I was able to try it out and that's what you need to see. You need to see how well the alcohol ink works with these and you will be impressed, it's so good. And the thing is, if you go wrong, you can just wipe it all off, just like you do when you're using ceramic tiles. I actually prefer these to using ceramic tiles because they don't stain at all. With ceramic tiles, sometimes it stains just a little bit. You know, if you go wrong and you want to wipe it off, you sometimes get some residue from the ink. But not with this, it just all wipes off, so it was perfect. And I found that it moved around a little bit better as well. So that's what you're going to see now. And then I'll show you what I made with them. I'm using Rangers inks for this. I'm using um, the colours are mm, Cloud and Poppy Field, I think they're called. And they go really well together. So just the two colours. And I'm just adding droplets of just clear isopropyl alcohol. It's the 99% one that I'm using. And I'm just pushing it around with my uh, airbrush, sorry. You can, if you haven't got an airbrush, that's okay. You can use a straw and blow onto it. You can use a heat gun as well, but you get a different effect because it dries out much quicker. But that's another thing you can use. I'm actually not the biggest fan of using a straw and blowing it. For some reason, I found that when you're blowing onto it, it somehow changes the colour of the ink. Um, there must be some kind of chemical reaction going on there. I don't know. But yeah, I do prefer to use my airbrush and it just works really well. And I could sit there, honestly, I could sit there for hours and hours doing this. It's so relaxing and I get into a world of my own. 
Um, I'm not using any particular method because I'm learning with it. I'm just making it up as I go along, seeing what works and what doesn't work. And that's the way I learn. I'm not very good at learning from watching people. I watch videos for inspiration, but then I go away and I have a go at doing it myself and learning for myself what works and what doesn't work. That's just the way I am. You might you might work differently than me, but yeah, I'm just sat there in a world of my own, <laughs> making it up as I go along and discovering what works well. And that's what I'm doing. And it just is so enjoyable. What I love the most, I think, about working on these whiteboards is if it all goes wrong, you can just get a cloth with some alcohol on and wipe it all off and your board is like new again and you can start again. Um, and if you're just learning and you're using something like Upo paper, which is quite good, um, although I find it quite expensive, if you're using Upo paper and you go completely wrong, that's your paper finished, you can't do it again. And so if you're just learning how to use alcohol inks, just like I am, this is a really good option for you. Because like I say, you can just wipe it all off and start again. I wanted to give this gold edges. So I just took some size, which is for gilding with gold leaf or whatever colour leaf you've got. Uh, but I didn't want to use gold leaf. I find it a bit too messy. So I'm just painting on the size and I left it for about five minutes. You're supposed to leave it for a bit longer, but the material that these boards are made of on the inside is quite absorbent and it really kind of sucks it all in and you don't need long before you can move on to the next step. So yeah, about five minutes, I painted it on all the way around and then once all that was done, I took some mica powder and I've used the pure gold mica powder from Arteza and just dabbed it on with my finger all the way around and then it gave a really delicate shimmering gold edge. Once that was done, I sprayed the front and the sides with spray varnish twice. I let it dry and I gave it another coat and then I knew it was nicely protected. So now I'm making it into a notebook and I've positioned my paper and marked out where the holes are and I'm just going to be punching the holes with my crocodile hole punch which is fantastic. Do you know I'm, I must have had that 15 to 20 years and it still cuts through things no problem at all. But if you don't have one that's fine. You can put masking tape on and drill a hole in there. Drill all your holes in there. The masking tape will just stop the drill from slipping. And then once you've got your holes in both pieces you can put your book in, your note paper sorry, and then add your book rings. I'll make a list of all the products that I've used which from Amazon in my Amazon storefront. So there'll be a list there just for this video and you can see everything that I've used in that list. If it's from Amazon. Not everything's from Amazon. <laughs> Right, I'm going to quickly zoom through this one, but I thought you might quite like to see it. It's quite enjoyable to watch this kind of thing, I find. Now, for this one, I'm using the Rangers inks again, and it's eggplant and raisin, the colours that I've used. I'm really careful when I'm using inks or paints or anything to not have the three primary colours in there, because... Once you've got the three primary colours in there, you're going to start getting muddy colours because it will just, those, the three primary colours obviously make brown. And so I've got the um, purple and the red. So that's blue and red. I don't want anything with yellow in. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm just be sticking to those colours. And yeah, I love these colours actually. I think it's a great colour combination. And this one's going to be made into a clipboard.
Again, I spread it twice with varnish and now I've got my clips, which I will link to in my Amazon storefront, which come with rivets. And so what you need to do is just mark the holes and cut them again, um, make the holes again. I'm using my hole punch and you could use a drill, as I said before. And then I'm going to attach the clip with the rivets. The rivets come with the clips and they're in two pieces. You get the top and the bottom and they just go together and you've just got to bash them. <laughs> there is a proper tool you can get and I don't have that tool so I, improv I improvised. It helps if you can say the words. I improvised <laughs> with a large hammer and a small hammer and it works fairly well but because I was working on my table, I didn't want to bash it too hard. And you'll see in a minute that it did actually fall to bits. <laughs> and that wasn't the fault. There's nothing wrong with the clip or the rivets. It was me. I should have put it down on the floor once I'd finished filming and given it a really hard bash with the hammer. You do need to be quite firm with it. And I didn't want to damage my new table. And that's where I went wrong. <laughs> Once it was finished, I just added the clip for the pen, which comes with the whiteboards from Arteza. So you just can put that on the side and you can clip your pen in there. Either a whiteboard pen if you're going to be using the back of it as a whiteboard or just your pen or your pencil. So that was that one completed. A nice, easy gift for anybody or just for yourself. But it was so quick and easy to make and I think it looks great. As you will have seen, I made a notebook and here's the finished notebook. And I'm going to give this to my mum because her favourite flowers are sweet peas and I think these flowers look just like sweet peas. Ideally, I would probably resin over the top but for the sake of making the video, I didn't. I just gave it two layers of varnish. But to make it more hard wearing, resin over the top would be better. Um, one thing I would say, if you're going to use alcohol ink on these, make sure you spray varnish them first before you put resin on, if you're going to put resin on. Because otherwise, the alcohol ink will all, all your pattern will go. It will just merge with the resin and you'll cry and I don't want you to cry so, so spray it first then do the um, epoxy resin on the top if you want epoxy resin on the top so that was that one I also made my clipboard and these whiteboards come with these clips that you can put on the side for a pen if you want to because the good thing is you can use the back to do your writing on and use it as a whiteboard if you want to. My pen's running out because I lost the lid. And then wipe it off. So yeah, I've got my nice clipboard. You could even make the front of your notebook in, into a clipboard with putting these on. And I'll put a link in the description for these because these are really good, these clips. Ooh, really good. I don't think I hammered that in very well. Okay. So, now I've broken it. They are really good, I promise you. I just didn't hammer it in properly. <laughs> I'll carry on. The best thing I discovered in this whole process, other than discovering that I can punch holes easily with my crocodile. The next best thing I discovered was that you can cut them in half with a craft knife. It takes a long time to cut through it, but you can cut them in half or into any other shape you like. And so I was able to make an A5 book as well to go with it. So I thought that was really cool to know that there, you don't need to get power tools and saws and stuff out to cut them. You can use your craft knife. But like I said, you'll see in a moment, you have to go through it a few times. I'll show you a clip of 
me cutting it. Um, so yeah, you can cut them so you can make anything you like, really. And that brings me on to the last thing which I made. And that is my desk tidy that goes with everything else. There's not much in it at the moment, but it doesn't matter. All you need to see is that you can cut it up into all the different pieces quite easily. This was one, actually one and a bit. The white board, one white board cut all of this and all of this and the sides. I needed another piece for the bottom and I had one that had gone wrong so I just used an off cut for the bottom. So it's Christmas time and it's perfect for giving gifts and so I'll be making lots of these. And the great thing is they're quite cheap. Let me see, I wrote down the price. So if you get the, let me see, where is it? Yeah, if you bought the pack of 32, which is what I've got, it works out a bit cheaper. So if you buy the pack of 32, they work out at £1.40 each. The white, Each whiteboard will be £1.40. And if you use my code for 10% off, it works out at £1.25 each, which is quite good, I think. You might be able to find them elsewhere. You will be able to find these whiteboards elsewhere. But I will give a word of caution. And I know, I know you're going to think I'm just saying this because I'm reviewing for Artes and they sent me the boards. But I'm not just saying this. I used to teach in a primary school and they use whiteboards in the classroom every day, more than they use paper. And believe me, if you get really, really cheap um, whiteboards, dry whiteboards, I keep calling them whiteboards, dry erase boards. If you get them really, really cheap, you, you're going to know about it because they're not very good. So just be careful, just be aware of that. If you find some and they're too cheap, just be careful because they might not be quite as good as you want them to be. So that's just my little word of warning. Be Feel free, buy them wherever you like. But the ones I use today are from Arteza and they are fantastic. I can definitely recommend them and you will get the code as well. So it's a win-win. So there we have it, everything I've made today. And I hope I've given you lots of ideas of things that you can make. I've got loads of ideas, loads and loads. I was thinking um, a key rack, you know, just put some hooks on and hang it on the wall. So that was my other idea. Sorry about the doorbell. Um, yeah, that's another idea. And what else did I think of? Oh, greetings cards. You could even make greetings cards and bookmarks and all sorts out of them. So they're really great. Yeah, let me know if you think of any other ideas of what you could do with them. I'd love to hear your um, ideas in the comments. And if you would like to see some more ideas from Arteza, they have their own channel and the link will be above for you to click on. And I'll leave it in the des description of the video as well. I'm so sorry, my dog is barking and I can't concentrate. <laughs> so anyway, that's it for today. And I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.